Okay, the um, purpose of this uh, screen recording is to demonstrate two things. One is the calculation of the mean absolute uh, deviation, the MAD, uh, and the second will be the graphing of quadratic functions. So I'm going to begin with um, the calculation of the mean absolute deviation. If you look on the right hand side of the screen, we have um, the uh, lesson that we did, the very first lesson on stats, and we've got some data on calorie counts for 18 different brands of um, meat hot dogs. And so you'll see if you look on the left hand side, what I have done is um, entered that uh, data into a spreadsheet uh, with the title meat. And what I'm going to do now is show you how it is you can uh, use the list function on the calculator to find the uh, mean absolute deviation. So I begin by um, uh, starting a new uh, list um, and uh, sorry I, I begin by um, uh, adding a, a new page and the page I'm going to add is just a calculator page and what I need to do first is find out what the average um, calorie count is for the list of data I have and so I'll go menu statistics stat calculations I want uh, uh, one variable statistics uh, it's for one list and the list that I want is the meat list and so that's going to give me one variable statistics and the um, parameter that I'm interested in is X bar the average 169.44 and so I'm just going to make a note uh, 169.44 is my uh, X bar value the average um, of the uh, calorie counts for the uh, meat hot dogs then what I want to do is go back to the calculator, um, go to a um, the same spreadsheet, and in the new uh, column, I'm going to uh, name this uh, MAD meat, so the mean absolute deviation calculation for the meat. Um, and then when I go into this uh, second row, what I'm going to do here is enter a formula. And the formula that I'm after, if we go uh, very quickly back to the note, you'll see um, uh, it's referenced we have our mean absolute deviation and uh, we have each individual score minus the average and we take the absolute value of that effectively what we're going to be doing on the calculator is this uh, top part of the formula um, the numerator of the formula and then we'll find an average so <clears throat> we go back over here so what I need uh, in here is to hit enter and it's going to paste in an equal sign a formula and now I'm going to go to um, the button just to the left of this uh, book and out of that uh, menu I'm going to choose uh, towards the left the absolute value sign I need the absolute value of uh, each value in the meat list so I'm going to type in uh, meat because that's the name of the other list and you'll see it goes bold because it gets recognized as a list uh, minus uh, and then what I need is the X bar value and so that was 169.44 two decimal places will be accurate enough and if I hit enter then you'll see what happens is <clears throat> it generates a list of numbers each of which is the difference between um, the number in the first column minus the average and that they're all positive because of absolute value and then what I'll do is I'll go back to my calculator page and the last step in the process is to find the average of the mad meat list so once again menu statistics stat calculations one variable statistics one list again and the list this time is the mad meat list and the average uh, in this case that we're after so mad meat x bar 18.85 and so the uh, mad in this case the mean absolute deviation 18.85 corrected two decimal places. Okay, we're going to go straight on to um, the quadratics. And so, what we're going to do on the quadratics is uh, I'm just going to uh, remind you of all of the different things that the calculator can do for you. So, what we have here is an application problem for quadratic functions um, where we are modeling the flight of a football which is kicked in a parabolic flight path. So we have our function over here, and so the first thing I'm going to do is graph that on the calculator. So if I come back to the calculator, I'll go to the home page. You have a couple of different choices. Uh, we could have actually continued working uh, in the document, and I could have just added a page there. 
or you could just work from the home page in the graphing. So I'll just add a page here and what I'm going to do is add a graphing page. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is enter the function in the bottom over here. And so that is uh, minus 16t squared. Now, of course, what I'm going to be using is uh, the x variable. You don't enter t in. Your calculator treats only x, y, and z as variables. And so we are going to enter that minus 16x squared uh, plus 45x uh, plus 2.5. And we're going to hit enter. It's grafted for us, but as you can see, this has not produced the shape we were expecting. And that is because we're going to need to modify our window. So if you go um, into the menu and you'll see one of your options is the window or zoom. What you can do as a preliminary step is to select zoom fit. This doesn't always work perfectly. We'll try it this time. And what you can see is that it's given us the portion of the graph we want, but it's also given us all of the space underneath that we don't need. So I'm going to go back in to the uh, window zoom menu and this time what I'm going to select is window settings and I can manually enter uh, the, the values that I want. So we're not interested in negatives. In this case, um, our function represents height as a function of time, so we have no negative time. So I'm going to leave uh, minus 2 in there, even though we can't have any negatives, we do want to be able to see the axes. Um, it's clear that we don't need all the way to 10, so I'm just going to put 5 in. Of course, anytime you make a mistake here, uh, it's not a big deal. You just go back and, and uh, re-enter the windows if necessary. The Y minimum, once again, I'm going to just go a little bit under the Y axis. Um, I definitely don't need uh, all those negatives because of what our function is modeling. And I'll leave the Y maximum as is. And now if I click OK, you can see it's adjusted. It looks significantly better, but we have a maximum which is way too high. And so once again, I'll go back into the window settings and uh, I'll just tab along to the Y maximum and I'm gonna estimate at this point that uh, what we need uh, for, for our Y maximum is probably gonna be uh, along the lines of about 35 and that's pretty close that's exactly what we need uh, we could make it a little higher if needs be so I'll just move this out of the way okay alright and so um, uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, you can see from here that uh, the instruction was to sketch and label the graph uh, and find and label uh, the vertex and also the y-intercept. So you don't need the calculator for the y-intercept. You should realize that 2.5 is in fact the y-intercept. It's the value when x is 0 uh, and that's fairly obvious from the graph here as well. You could use a table to find it but actually um, uh, reading it straight out of the equation is much easier. To find the vertex, the vertex is clearly in this case a maximum and so what we're going to do is go to the menu, we need to analyze the graph and we're going to calculate a maximum. We now need to give the calculator the upper and lower bound, so if I go to a point to the left of uh, where that turning point is uh, and then uh, hit enter, move to the right, hit enter and you've had the maximum calculated for you, um, that would be the um, uh, time of 1.41 seconds and a maximum height of 34.1 in the context of the problem. Uh, part uh, D uh, requires that uh, we figure out um, how many seconds after the ball was punted it was caught if it's caught at a height of 5.5. And so what we're going to do now is go back and we're going to um, enter um, another function. And so uh, one of the ways we can do that if we just push tab uh, it'll open up another um, box for us to enter another function and um, what I can enter in there is 5.5 and I'm going to graph this as a function you'll see it appears as a horizontal line and then what I'm interested in doing is calculating um, uh, the point of intersection between the parabola and the line and that point of intersection uh, there are two points of intersection as you can see I'm interested in the second one and the reason I know that is because the question says as the ball descends, in other words, as the ball is on its way back down to the ground. Okay, and so in order to find that point of intersection, what I want is to go to menu. Um, I want the uh, analyze graph. And what I'm interested in is the intersection. Once again, there are two intersection points, so the calculator needs you to identify the bounds. So I'm going to go to the left of that point that I want, hit enter. 
and go to the right, hit enter, and there we have our uh, point of intersection, 2.74 comma 5.5. So the 5.5 confirms the height at which the ball is caught, and that occurs at 2.74 seconds. And then the last piece of the problem uh, asks to find uh, after how long it would hit the ground. So that, of course, would be the x-intercept, where the uh, parabola cuts the x-intercept. And so, once again, I'll go into the menu. This time, I need the analyze graph and what I'm going to select this time is the zero. So uh, the graph that I want, you'll see the calculator is asking which graph. Uh, that would be the parabola. So I'm going to click on the parabola. Uh, once again, we need a lower bound because we have more than one zero. And so I want the one uh, just to the right of where we had the 5.5 catch. And so I'm going to click on one point to the left, go to the right, and there you can see 2.870 that's where the function which represents the height of the ball is zero in other words the balls hit the ground and that occurs at 2.87 seconds okay and you, that concludes the use of the calculator to find MAD and also for um, uh, graphing and finding key points on uh, quadratic uh, models